I am Dr. P. Kamraj, Professor and Dean of Science and Humanities, or Institute of Higher Education and Research. We are going to discuss about biodiversity under Unit 2 of Social and Environmental Engineering. We are going to discuss today the following topics. Biodiversity at the global, national and local levels. Biodiversity hotspots. Threats to biodiversity. What are the methods of conservation of biodiversity? Biodiversity is the measure of variety of earths, animals, plants and microbial species. It is also the measure of genetic differences within species and of the ecosystems that support the species. Out of an estimated 30 million species on the earth, only one sixth has been identified and authenticated in the past 200 years. 1.8 million species are known and are documented by scientists of the universe. The actual number of species of plants and animals on the earth could vary from 1.8 to 20 billion. Therefore, the majority of the species are yet to be discovered. That is what we understand from this data. India is considered to be a mega diversity nation because almost all of the biogeographical regions of the world are represented in India. With just 2.4% of the total land area of the world, known biodiversity of India contributes 8.22% of the known global biodiversity. India is one of the 12 mega diversity nations of the world. Ministry of Environment and Forest reports that India has at present 89,317 species of fauna and 45,364 species of flora, representing about 7.31% of the world fauna and 10.88% of world flora described so far. Now, let us see what is a biodiversity hotspot. A biodiversity hotspot is a biogeographic region with the significant levels of biodiversity that is threatened with destruction. To qualify as a biodiversity hotspot on Mayer's 2000 edition of hotspot map, a region must meet the two strict criteria. The criteria number one is it must contain at least 0.5% or 1500 species of vascular plants as endemics. Under the criteria number two, it has to have lost at least 70% of its primary vegetation. For example, Western Ghats and Sri Lanka are biodiversity hotspots. So, biodiversity hotspots are the regions which have high level endemic species. At the same time, they are under threat. Now, the global and the national status on hotspots is as follows. The number of biodiversity hotspots in the world is 36. And in India, there are four biodiversity hotspots, namely Himalayas, Indo-Burma, Western Ghats, and Sunda land. What are the threats to biodiversity? Actually, biodiversity helps us gives us so many things, but at the same time, what we return if you look at the threats. So the threats to biodiversity uh, are habitat loss, poaching of wildlife, manned wildlife conflicts, endangered and endemic species of India. So these are the major threats to biodiversity. What are the human actions that threaten biodiversity? The human population has gone beyond 6 billion. 
So what we do is we transform, we degrade, we destroy roughly half of the world's forests. So we appropriate roughly half of the world's net primary productivity for human use. We appropriate most available fresh water. We harvest virtually all the available productivity of the oceans. So it is little wonder that species are disappearing and ecosystems are being destroyed. So this is how the threat to biodiversity starts from the human. Uh, if you look at uh, the uh, statistics of uh, threats by various uh, uh, factors, uh, it could be uh, graphically shown like this. Uh, hunting of the species. So what we have uh, listed here, or uh, what, we, what this graph represents is uh, the known cause of animal extinction. Since 1600, hunting 23%. So, hunting uh, uh, makes extinction to about 23%. So, the 39% uh, is due to species introduction. That means introducing species from other regions, other habitats. That means uh, the species which are not native to that particular geography region is introduced. So uh, that is uh, causing uh, extinction because this results in the competition for food, nutrition, energy, etc. So that also causes extinction. Then habitat destruction. So the destruction of habitat of animals uh, for want of space for uh, anything, uh, human use, industrial use, uh, it may be anything like that. So habitats of animals is uh, destroyed. So uh, the extinction, uh, extinction due to that is 36%. The other uh, uh, causes are about 2%. Now, what are the causes for acceleration in extinctions. What are the causes for accelerated extinctions? So there are several causes for accelerated extinctions, uh, including the following, uh, mainly the loss and the fragmentation of habitats. So this is considered to be the number one cause uh, because uh, when once the habitat is lost, then no possibility for the survival of uh, the animals or the species. Then commercial hunting and the harvesting. Commercial hunting, the hunting uh, the animals, wild animals, uh, for want of uh, you know uh, food, medicine, or for the organs for some uh, use uh, by human uh, uh, is one of the causes for accelerated uh, extinctions, and also for hunting the animals uh, for. Uh, uh, exporting for different purposes, then uh, introduction and influence of exotic species. As I already uh, told you, exotic species are the species which are non-native to that particular region. They do not belong to that particular native. They are from, brought from some other geographic region. So when exotic species are introduced, uh, this influences uh, uh, this influences the competition for food and uh, uh, the other uh, uh, comfortable uh, parameters which uh, the species require. So when there is a competition, only uh, the uh, the able species uh, which could win food, nutrition, etc could survive there. So naturally, uh, the habitual species, the, the native species or the endemic species go extinct because of the introduction of exotic species. Then pest uh, predator control programs. So these also accelerate extinction, uh, extinctions 
that pollution and the uh, atmosphere of uh, an ecosystem or a geographic region is polluted what happens is uh, the species are not able to survive uh, because they are not able to tolerate the atmosphere tolerate the atmospheric pollution so pollution also uh, is one of the causes for accelerated extinction then loss of keystone species when keystone species are lost uh, the species which depend on the keystone species are also lost so extinction occurs then biological limitations of uh, sensitive species the keystone species we were discussing about the keystone species uh, if you take uh, sea otter uh, it is an example of keystone species uh, so these uh, sea otters uh, they uh, consume uh, sea urchins they depend on sea urchins for food so when keystone uh, species namely sea otters are removed uh, what happens is uh, the population of sea urchins increase and hence uh, the consequence is in the food chain uh, the sea urchins consume more of kelp more sea urchins uh, are are uh, surviving so uh, the uh, requirement of uh, food namely kelp is also more so more sea urchins uh, more of uh, kelp is consumed so uh, there is a break in the food chain so the uh, this is the uh, effect on food chain and uh, uh, this is how the uh, extinction of uh, species uh, uh, occur because of the loss of or disappearance of keystone species then habitat loss the habitat destruction also termed as habitat loss and the habitat reduction is the process by which a natural habitat becomes incapable of supporting its native species so the organisms that previously inhabited the site are displaced or die thereby reducing biodiversity and species abundance poaching of wildlife so illegal hunting when uh, the wildlife is hunted then the number of wildlife animals is reduced then finally it uh, becomes endangered and threatened then uh, ultimately extinction of uh, wild animals take place man wildlife conflict when man wildlife conflict occurs when man occupies the forest land or part of the forest land what happens is the animals which normally live in the forest areas lose the resources required for them when their needs are not fulfilled with the resources available for them they naturally move to the nearby places so there starts man wildlife conflicts so uh, what happens when man hunts or when man man kills the animals then this conflict continues then extinctions take place endangered and the endemic species found in india so the listed species are found in india asiatic lion which is found in gir forest of gujarat sangai deer uh, loktak lake lion tailed mac western ghats kashmir stag which is in kashmir valley nilgiri tor nilgiri kills purple frog in western ghats pygmy horn pygmy hawk assam critically endangered animals uh jenkins shrew malabar large spotted tibet namdafa flying squirrel pygmy hawk salamelis food bat sumatran rhinoceros rotans 
free tail bird. We also have one horned rhinos in Assam. Endangered animals. Asiatic lion, Asiatic black bear, a desert cat, great Indian rhinoceros, Indian elephant or Asian, Asian elephant, blue whale, camp leaf monkey, fin whale, Ganges river dolphin, Hespit head, Indus river dolphin, a red panda. What you see in picture are desert cat and Capped leaf monkey. Endemic species. Endemic species are animals or plants that exist only in some particular areas and nowhere else in the world. So the species which are native to the particular area. In India, endemic species are mostly in Himalaya and Western Ghats. The endemic animals in India are lion tailed mac. Nilgiri langur, brown palms, uh, civet, and Nilgiri tar. Sangai deer, located in Lokak Lake in Manipur. So, this is one of the largest freshwater lakes, Lokak Lake, in the entire world, where we can see Sangai deer. Asiatic lion. Uh, Five protected areas currently exist to protect the Asiatic lion. Uh, they are uh, Gir Sanctuary, Gir National Park, Pania Sanctuary to form the Gir Conservation Area covering an area of 20,000 kilometers, square kilometers of forest representing the core habitat for the Asiatic lions. Now, biodiversity conservation. How to conserve the biodiversity? Though there are a lot of threats uh, to the biodiversity, it is the duty and responsibility of the human being and uh, the countries to conserve the biodiversity. So, there are two types of biodiversity conservation methods. One is in situ biodiversity conservation, another one is ex situ conservation. Under in situ conservation, uh, you have protected area network. Under ex situ conservation, you have uh, the different uh, arrangements sacred plants, home gardens, seed banks, field gene, uh, gene banks, cryo preservation, then uh, botanical gardens, zoological gardens, aquaria, etc. Then uh, you also have uh, under uh, in situ terrestrial and marine, depending on the place, whether it is on land or uh, marine water. Now, in situ conservation, it is known as on site conservation because in situ conservation is one by, uh, uh, in which uh, the uh, species are protected on site. That is, uh, it refers to the conservation of wild species in their natural habitats and environment. In India, the conservation of forest areas is done through protected areas like national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and biosphere reserves. Promotions of in situ conservation of medicinal plants is also important to the Irish uh, due to its dependence on medicinal plants uh, because the medicinal plants, for example, Sincona tree is a medicinal plant used for curing malaria disease. So what you see in picture is uh, the one-horned rhinos, which is available in Assam. Ex situ conservation, it is the preservation of components of biological diversity outside their natural habitats. Some of these include gene banks, namely seed banks, sperm and ova banks, field banks, in vitro plant tissue, 
and then microbial culture collections then captive breeding of animals and artificial propagation of plants with possible reintroduction into the wild collecting living organisms of uh, from zoo for zoos aquaria and botanic gardens for research and public awareness in situ advantages so any method if you take there will be advantages as well as disadvantages so this method in situ conservation does not involve in uh, uh, removing species from their natural ecosystems so the species can be taken care of in their natural habitat so that is an advantage ecological integrity is maintained it involves protection of larger population you can protect a larger population only in in situ conservation uh, because the area will be larger uh, and the conservation of organisms and their habitat as a whole you can protect the organisms of species uh, get the opportunity to evolve so it will be compatible for the organisms to evolve uh, then it allows and uh, facilitates the scientific studies of the area scientific studies to be carried out uh, in the area at the same time the in situ conservation has got the disadvantages too it requires larger areas animals are always under threat of several diseases or any natural disasters so in the case of natural disasters it is very difficult to protect the animals uh, which are in under uh, in situ conservation the risk of increased inbreeding and thus reduced fitness which is known as homozygo homozygosity the animal species to be less productive and thus expensive to be monitored and maintained poachers and ecological tourists may find these thriving habitats as an opportunity and may cause harm though for the tourists it gives enjoyment if they harm the uh, species then it will be a danger to the uh, method or there will be a loss the in exitu conservation the advantages exitu conservation has the following advantages so the uh, here the protection of species from external threats is possible like uh, predation and poaching Uh, selective breeding processes are put in place uh, it involves reintroduction of several organisms that have left their natural habitat so uh, the species which have left the the natural habitat can be reintroduced reproduce so the uh, population of such organisms could be increased enhanced by this ex situ conservation then improves the quality Offspring can be obtained. So the disadvantages are also there. The ex situ conservation uh, can be considered only for a few kinds of species. That means you cannot uh, consider all species to be conserved by ex situ because the space and other uh, things are will not be sufficient. Will not be possible to have uh, required resources for all kinds of species uh, to conserve them by ex situ method due to human interference rare species remain under threat interbreeding hybridization captive species show divergent genetics then poor germination rate is observed in ex situ conservation uh, this method is costlier compared to in situ and uh, uh, that could be harm to seeds by the pests 
So that is an observation or an, a, a disadvantage uh, that would be uh, that should be notified here. So finally, uh, we have discussed uh, today biodiversity hotspots. What are the criteria for biodiversity hotspots? Uh, uh, what are the threats to biodiversity? Uh, then uh, how to protect uh, the uh, biodiversity from the threats uh, under uh, two different methods, namely in situ and the ex situ conservation. So these things we have discussed in this lecture today.